Hi everyone, my name is Matt, and welcome to another Hobby Hour tutorial. Let's paint this Lumineth Archer for Warhammer Age of Sigmar using a few contrast paints combined with a classic base coat, shade, and highlight style. Lumineth tends to have lots of bright, solid colors, and my usual contrast method won't work well on this kind of model. So I'll be reverting to a more classic approach with clean base coats and edge highlights. Painting in this way takes a little longer than the contrast method, but I feel it's a very important skill to develop. After cleaning the parts, I assembled everything and kept the quiver separate to make painting easier, and I mounted the parts on corks. I primed the model with a medium gray primer, followed by an airbrush of white paint, concentrating more of the white near the top. The box art shows a few different shades of white and gray, and we can get two different shades from Skeleton Horde by thinning it down. I'm starting off by painting the armor with a mix of equal parts Skeleton Horde and Contrast Medium. Focus on painting an even layer, and use the brush to soak up any extra paint if it starts pooling. Next I took some undiluted Skeleton Horde and painted all of the robes. I used some dwarf skin from Vallejo Express Color and painted the face. And when that dried, I painted a second layer to deepen the color. I base coated the legs and arms with Fenrisian Gray. Next I painted all the leather areas with Gorthor Brown. The box art has a really dark leather color, but I think I'll go with a more medium brown instead. While the leather is drying, I gave the bow a base coat of Mornfang Brown. I used Rune Lord Brass to paint these details on the bow. It'll be much easier to paint them now before painting the strings. Next I painted Kalidor Sky on the center piece of fabric and the other details. Then I painted the strings and quiver strap with Administratum Gray. Next I shaded the bow and all the leather areas with Agrax Earth Shade.
To shade the blue areas, I made a mix of three parts Tyron Blue and one part Drakenhof Nightshade. Tyron Blue on its own is too weak, and Drakenhof Nightshade is too dark, but this mix makes a good medium. Next I shaded all the strings with Basiliconum Gray. Then I diluted the Basiliconum Gray with an equal amount of contrast medium and shaded the Fenrisian Gray cloth areas. Next I took some black and painted the inside of the sleeves. The model doesn't have anything sculpted here, but I wanted to give the impression of a shadow. Now for the time-consuming part, black lining. Thin down some black paint with equal parts water, and paint a black line in between any areas where you want more definition. The most important areas are going to be the edges of the armor to help define the brass trim later. It's best to do this step now, that way if you make any mistakes you can easily cover them up later with the highlight colors. With the black lining done, I painted all of the armor trim and metal areas with Rune Lord Brass. And when the brass dried, I applied a coat of Reichland Flesh Shade. Then I painted the arrowhead with Iron Hand Steel. And when that was dry, I shaded it with Basiliconum Gray. I wasn't sure how I wanted to paint the arrows and the dagger handle, but I ended up deciding on a dark blue. So I base coated them with Macrag blue. Then I shaded those areas with a generous coat of Drakenhof Nightshade. Next I painted the eyes. It's a little hard to see with the bow in the way. I started with a coat of black paint. Then I painted the eyes with white and then I went in with a dot of black for the pupils. The eyes can really help tell the story, so pay attention to the direction the model is looking. So at this stage you could glue the quiver on and call it finished to a tabletop standard. Since this process can take a while, it might be a good idea to get your whole army to this stage so you can get to playing, and then highlight each model as you find the time later. For the first highlight, I thinned down some bone white and applied a glaze over the cloth. Contrast paint can leave an uneven looking surface, especially on smooth areas, and a glaze can help even out the finish. Next I used Off-White from Vallejo Game Color and painted over the armor using the same glazing technique. It might take a couple of layers to build up a smooth finish. While it may take a little time, I think the end result is worth it. I also used off-white to highlight the trim around the fabric. Now for highlighting the blue. 
I highlighted the cloth with some Kalidor sky. I didn't bother highlighting the other areas with it. As those details are small enough, we can jump ahead to the next step. Next I mixed equal parts Kalidor sky and Lothurn blue, and I highlighted the edges of the fabric and the ends of the tassels and the helmet decoration. Then I highlighted the very edges and corners with Lawthorn Blue. I wanted to add some edge highlights to the armor, so I thinned down some white and carefully painted close to the trim. Exactly where you place these highlights is up to you. I tend to follow around the border of each section and concentrate more of the highlight on the upward facing areas. Next I highlighted the edges of the strings with administratum gray. And then I highlighted the dark blue areas with Macrag blue. I highlighted the edges of the leather with Gorthor brown. And then I used Bane blade brown on the topmost edges and corners. I highlighted the blue-gray cloth in two steps, beginning with a thin glaze of Fenrisian gray to even out the finish. When the glaze was dry, I went back with Fenrisian gray again and added a line highlight on some of the edges. I highlighted the edges of the wood with XV88. Then I used Stormhost Silver to highlight the edges of all the metal areas. I like the look of silver on the edges of brass. It really makes all the details pop. And finally I painted the gemstones, beginning with a line of black around the edges, followed by a coat of white. Then I applied some Tyron Blue to the gem. The brush will deposit more paint where it last touches the model, so I like to make sure to end the brush stroke near the top of the gem, and the result is a blended effect from dark to light. After that first coat dried, I applied a second coat in the same way to deepen the color. Next I painted some Drakenhof Nightshade to the topmost section of the gem. And after that dried, I painted a small dot of white. I 
I was looking over the model and thought the dark blue areas could use another highlight, so I quickly painted the edges with Calgar Blue. I used an old brush to apply some textured paint, and while the paint was still wet I sprinkled on some gravel and fine sand. After allowing it to dry, I sealed in the sand with a coat of Rhinox Hide. I dry brushed the base with Mornfang Brown, followed by Baylor Brown, and then Bone White. The rocks were given a coat of Dawnstone, followed by a wash of Agrax Earth Shade. I painted the edge of the base with black, and when that was dry, I applied some patches of static grass with super glue. When the basing was finished, I glued the quiver on with super glue. And here we have the finished Lumineth Venari Sentinel. This style of painting does take a little more time, but it's hard to beat how clean it looks. It's a great skill to have in your toolbox. Thank you all for watching and making it this far. And thank you for all of your comments, kind words, and suggestions for future videos. It was just a few weeks ago we were celebrating the 1500 subscriber milestone, and now we're over 4,000. It's really amazing to see the channel taking off like this, and I couldn't do it without each and every one of you watching, liking, and subscribing. Thank you for making this all possible. Well, I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy painting.